Hey, listen to Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 33. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. Today we're going to use Gaddock Teague to make your opponent's buttock bleed. Now hit our theme song. Hey, Ryan, we're back for another adventure. How you doing, man? Good. I can't even help but laugh every time you say that. <laughs> what is going down? A whole lot is going down. We're doing, I believe this is the last episode oh. proper in our arc of opposition. Yeah, and you know what? Um, We don't actually have a cleanup or wrap-up show for the arc of opposition. It was pretty clean, pretty clear, much like our uh, monochromatic arc that we kind of started the show off yeah. with. Yeah, oh, and you know what? Maybe a teaser for future episodes, we do have the enemy colored by color decks or dual color decks that we got to do too maybe that's when we'll do the wrap-up show Ooh, that could be neat Ooh, yeah so that's five more episodes of content that i don't have to actually think about i just have to build decks for yes although building decks isn't as easy as oh yeah so what's such a time suck right it took like three days for me to build this deck i like the deck excellent um, and you guys are going to like the deck too once we get to it yeah before we do though yeah, we've got all kinds of cleanup stuff. First, we're going to do what we always do, which is the social media coordinates. Yes. Social media coordinates. We are Commander Cookout Podcast at gmail.com. If you want to send us anything, deck lists, suggestions, love mail, hate mail, no nudes. <coughs> nudes. Yeah. We're also Commander Cookout on iTunes, Google Play, Podomatic. I think that's everything. Every, oh. Everywhere that actually picks up RSS feeds that you can listen to podcasts on, as it were. Yeah. Who knew? And, and YouTube. Oh, yeah, and YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. got uh, one of the shout-outs. New subscribers on YouTube. Cool. People actually, I guess, uh, subscribe to things on YouTube and just let them play. Like, lots of people do listen to podcasts or just listen to music on YouTube. Huh. Yeah. Neat. Huh? I didn't know that. We're also CCO Podcast on tappedout.net and Twitter. Uh, Tapped Out is where you find all the deck lists we're going to talk about in the future, in the past, and today. Yes, and some that we'll probably never talk about that are just on there. Yes, because we just put them in there because that's how we roll. Okay, shout outs. Speaking of YouTube, you can also find us now on edhrec.com. What? Yeah. Really? That's a thing. We um, the The reason that we started doing the YouTube content is... EDHREC.com picks up playlists and puts them on their community content page. And you can find other notables like, uh, we've mentioned them before, uh, Commander's Brew, Command Zone Podcast, and now Commander Cookout Podcast on EDHREC.com. That is an excellent Mount Rushmore of magic podcasts. Yeah, for sure. And big shout out to Don Miner at EDHREC because we use their services, their... Uh, their, the, everything that that site provides um, tons on this show because that's part of how we do our spicy calculator. Yes, it is. It's a it's a great resource site, and you should all check it out if you don't already, which you probably do. We mentioned it in the intro, Gaddock Teague, today. <laughs> and this being Arc of Opposition, we are doing what is not normal for a strictly Selesnia deck, green-white deck. Normally you'd suggest, or you'd expect maybe um, tokens. Tokens, big dudes. Big dudes, tokens, uh, lots of enchantments. I'm thinking of Captain Sisse. I have a Captain Sisse green-white Selesnia deck, and it is exactly all of those things. There's token production, there's big dudes because Sisse finds angels. It's quite controly. lots of enchantments. Is that what we're doing today? Hell no. 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 What are we doing? We're doing a Voltron deck, Ryan. Yes. <laughs> Gaddock Teague, Voltron, and... If you wanted to hear more about any of the Voltron stuff we've talked about in the past, you could, of course, go to, we point back to it all the time, episode 11. 11 is our archetype rundown, and also episode 15, where we did Ural the Fist Stalker. Yes. Yep. Actually, in this same shitty studio that we're in. Yes. The Wood Age, creaky, squeaky studio. Yeah, all of the mic arms squeak. There's no mic socks in any of the mics. Both of our chairs, the wheel, the wheels don't work, so we can't roll around. My chair is hanging on by like one screw. I feel <laughs> yeah. like I'm going to die at any second. Mine had a mic sock, but I turned the mic and it flew across the room. <laughs> yeah. So. It's terrible. Wow. We're, uh, you know what? I'm still thankful. We got a good studio. That's true. You, Despite you, being the shittiest studio at the station, it's still pretty. Yeah, it, it's still many more dollars than we have worth of studio. Oh, I had one more thing, and I think that you got a funny story. I sure do. A couple weeks ago, we were talking about Kervek the Merciless. Yeah. He's such a dick. He's a real penis. Who did we play the other day? 
Oh, Corey and his Caravic the Merciless. Oh, and you know what? I think we found the niche. He costs seven mana to cast. Yes. If he was printed today, he'd probably cast four. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, there wasn't enough players at the table to really dink stomp the Caravac Merciless player into the ground. Correct. And we, we got rolled. We we I was just gonna say that, but then I thought we didn't really get rolled because it was a pretty good game. We all ended the the game like at like you had twelve life, Corey had eighteen or nineteen, and he won. And I went from like twelve to zero in one turn because I I cast a couple things to try and get rid of Caravec, but it didn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So I mean, I was at twelve, you were at twelve, whatever. Corey was at eighteen. We were all beating each other down pretty good, but if there was one other player that was being affected so heavily by the Caravec player, I think Corey would have got stomped because it, it kind of would have been three against one. It is very oppressive. And he played it on, like, turn three. Yeah. He got he, the ramp out the, perfect. and The ramp out uh, perfect, and then he had the, um, what was it, uh, Basilisk Collar yeah, to give so. himself life link, or else he would have been dead because he gained, like, 20 life off that Caravec, and he ended the game with 18 or 19. Like, he would have been almost perfectly dead. Oh, that would have been nice. Yeah. And then I would have won. Most likely. Probably. What What are you talking about? Beer story. We got to oh. go get beer because we're doing open flippy dot drinky today. With a power cube. Oh. oh, yes. Oh. Beer story. So I go to see my friend's band on Thursday. Yeah. Her name is Zelda. It's, Zelda, Belladonna, and the Deadly Nightshades. If you look them up, they're very good. Here's is that the name of the band? Yes. Her name is Zelda Belladonna. That's her stage name. And then the ah. band is the Deadly Nightshades. They're super good. Whoa. So we went to see them at a local gay bar that <laughs> used to be a local boxing club. And oh, the, I know what you're talking and about. And I hadn't been in it since it was a boxing club, and there was, like, broken teeth on the floor, and there was blood everywhere, and it was really gross. And now it's, like, all of that, but a bar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, why would you want to go to a bar where there's, you know, that sounds terrible? How much do you pay for a craft pint at a bar, Ryan? Mm, seven bucks. That's about right. Yeah. Now, what if I told you you could get a pitcher of beer at this bar for eight bucks i would say what are we doing here i don't care that there's a foot of snow on the ground and it's freezing we are just north of down south of downtown we should just go there right now eight dollars and there weren't like when i ordered it i was expecting like it it was like a big pitcher yeah it was an actual like not a not a 25 ounce pint four beers in the pitcher it's pretty good yeah i wasn't even gonna take a glass but they have to i think they made me i drank two on a Thursday, and Excellent. I woke up to go to work the next day. Oh, I'm not 22 anymore. No, no, I'm not. No, nope. all of those things are great yeah. except for the morning after. Yeah. Oh, and shout out to not being 22 anymore. I went to uh, me and Rebecca went out. Uh, my parents came down and babysat the kid for for the night, and we went out to McGuire's. It's not called McGuire's anymore, and you didn't call it McGuire's even when it was called McGuire's. The Dirty Potato. Yeah, now it's called the Thirsty Scholar. Shout out to that place. Dirty Potato. We went there, and it was what was Halloween this year on a Tuesday or something? Yeah. We went on the Saturday, and I didn't think, oh, fuck, it's fight night or whatever, and we're going to the bar on a Saturday. No, Halloween pub crawl. Worst. Everybody oh. was yelling and screaming. Our waitress I knew from a long time ago because we used to go there lots. <laughs> and and uh, now I said, oh, okay, I'm not 19 anymore. Got it. <laughs> and she still works there? Yes. After all this time? Y- yeah. Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. Mind you, if you're in a town where there is a significant um, industrial boom like Saskatoon has experienced over the last 10 years or so, you can make a crap ton of money working in the service industry. That's very true. Especially if you're a sexy girl with a really nice butt. Is she? Yes. Does she have fresh stitches in her face? No. Because that's usually what I expect at the potato. No, it's nice there. I get in the look. We should move on. <laughs> <laughs> should we move on? Let's let's, let's talk about some, some magic stuff. Okay, we Galaxy, yeah, we're, we are actually a Magic the Gathering EDH-focused podcast. Yes, we are. Galactic Voltron, let's look at the recipe. Creatures. Eight creatures. Including Gaddock Teague. Should we read Gaddock Teague? Let's read Gaddock Teague. Okay, Gaddock Teague read. is a 2-2 two, two for two. Yeah, good. <laughs> Non-creature spells with converted mana cost four or greater can't be played. Non-creature spells with X in their cast, ding cost, good save, can't be played, period. Then there's some flavor text that I can't read because the screen's too small. Whoa. This guy, people hate this guy. 
They, yes. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, they do. Just making sure. I play them in the, the uh, Captain Sisse deck that I was telling you about, and I never search for them, but sometimes you natural draw them, and as soon as he hits the table, especially if it's like turn two or three, you're oh. public enemy number one. Absolutely you are. Because nobody can play their stuff. They can play creatures. You can play creatures. You can play your big fatties, but you can't play your big bomby, combo-y, funny EDH stuff. Yeah, and a, it shuts off a surprising amount of removal, too. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking, right in white, we wouldn't want to play Smite the Monstrous. Kills a big, big. Right. For, like, four mana. Ooh. Can't play it. Can't play it. Wait. It turns off things four and greater. That also turns off Damnation, Wrath of God. Yeah. Every Wrath except for Bontu's glorious butthole or whatever it's called. I guess you can get it with Pyroclasm? Not Pyrohemia because it costs four, too? Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. Oh, well, you couldn't get it with Pyroclasm or, like, Volcanic Fallout or nothing within a turn because you're going to equip them. That's true. Yeah. So oh. a couple, couple, couple goodies there in the creature section there, the one that you found the, uh, what is it, the Path to Exile or whatever on a stick? Oh, yes. Avenger N. Doll. He's from Masks Block, the one with the axe. It's a spell shaper. We all remember what spell shapers do. You pay a mana, you discard a card to get another effect. Correct. In this case, it's white, two, tap, discard a card from your hand, Remove target attacking creature from the game. Its controller gains life equal to its toughness. Yeah. So catch is there. You got to ditch a card, but if you were playing a like a path or a swords, that card would end up in your graveyard. Fine. Got to be attacking, not attacking you. Yeah. Just so attacking. it can still attack, and you just let it happen, right? Yeah. Just don't attack me. It's basically condemn on a stick. It's onboard tricks. Yeah. Right? It's excellent, and it's repeatable, and it can take any dead card you have and turn it into something great. And do you give a shit if people gain life? Nope. And why is that, Ryan? Mostly because Voltron. Exactly. Voltron, any of the new kids, 21 damage from a single commander, you're dead. Period. Yep. Doesn't matter how much life you've gained, how much life you have, dead. That is all. From a single commander. Yes. Okay. So I like that guy. I like Gaddock Teague. There's a couple searcher uppers there, tutor creatures in Stoneforge Mystic. She costs two. She uh, searches for an equipment, puts it into your hand, and you can pay one and a white and tapper to put an equipment from your hand onto the battlefield. Oh, greasy. And then there is, uh, what's his name, Stonehewer Giant? Stonehewer Giant. He kind of broke my theme a little bit, and I'll talk about the theme in a bit, but he's a 4-4 four, four for five. Two of those are white. He's got Vig, Illence, white one, tap him, search your library for an equipment card, put it onto the battlefield, and attach it to a creature you control. Yeah. Holy crap. Now, a couple things about Stone Hero Giant. A, I like Vig. You can just leave it at that. I like that. <laughs> Does any other ability work like that? Tramp. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Tramp. Yeah, he tramps. Uh, Flample is a thing, flying trample. Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, whatever. Stone Hero Giant. You can still cast him with Gaddock Teague. Fine. I was going to suggest a couple things in the suggestion category of the show that lets you kind of go back to your theme that we're going to talk about, but put it onto the battlefield and, and attach it to something. Wh what? what? <laughs> he's very good. For two. Yeah. Now, the only thing is he, he's got the little bit of a hefty price tag in comparison to other cards in the deck. Casting cost or money-wise? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, casting cost. Yes, absolutely. He's not on curve, so to speak. No. He's he's way above the curve. Yep. But oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, let's move on here. Instants and sorceries. We've got five instants, two sorceries. They're going to kind of be exactly what you expect. In the instant section, we've got a little ditty called Condemn. We've got Cross and Grip. We've got, uh, what is it, Swords to Plowshares. Yep. And Nature's Claim. They yep. all destroy something, artifacts, enchantments, creatures, and um, they're all very cheap. One or two mana, or three in Cross and Grip's case. Uh, yes, and they give your opponent life, yeah, which you don't care about. Exactly. So you want to you want to cast a naturalize, destroy target artifact or enchantment, but you want to do that for one mana instead of two. Here's a couple life. Nature's claim. Yeah. Yes. Four life. So good. Yeah, we don't actually care about that. Oh, yeah. uh, what's the what's the pump spell that does that again? It goes in an infect invigorate. Yes. How come not invigorate in this deck? Because it costs five or six, so you can't play it. I think it, it costs four. You play it for free. But you oh, can't play it on Gaddock T yeah, yeah, because it right. costs four. That's right. Okay, F yeah. that card. Yes. And the sorceries, uh, I'll get into these real quick. Neither one of them can be played when Gaddock Teague is on the battlefield, but 
they're just in there for funsies. I got Desert Twister. It destroys permanent because sometimes you just really need to get rid of the moat yep. or the abyss or there's something that's stopping Gaddictee from Name target existing. card from Legends and get rid of it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And then I also have a Divine Reckoning. Now, I played it instead of Wrath of God just for flavor's sake where everybody picks a dude and then you destroy the rest because then you could pick Gaddick Teague, but I know you can't play this with Gaddick Teague on the Yeah, it, it maybe could be just Wrath of God because Wrath of God gets everything. Yes, it should 100% be Wrath of God. You know what, God. the Divine Reckoning, I mean, maybe you've got one of your other creatures on the battlefield. Yeah, maybe could, somebody's got 20, 10 creatures, whatever. Divine Reckoning has flashback too, so you flash yeah. it back for white, white, five. Yes. And again, destroy everything except one of everybody's things. Except your super highly equipped dude. Because I mean, yeah. maybe Gaddick T didn't make it. You gotta play yeah, with something I think else. We talk about that in in the episode fifteen when we were talking about Voltron. Is sometimes you're just going to equip up Buddy, and somebody's going to be at ten, and then they're going to be dead. Yes. So that's that's a yeah. thing. That is a thing that less happens. often in this deck though, because there's only eight creatures. Correct, and some of them are fairly utility, yeah, and kind of crappy. Yeah. Yes, yes. Artifacts. Here's the 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 bread and butter, yeah. the meat and potatoes, yes. the Say the number, Ryan. Say the number. 35. Yeah, 35. <laughs> Last week was when you have more creatures than you have land, <laughs> you're probably an aggro deck. This week, if you've got as many artifacts as you have land, you're probably a Voltron deck. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, when you have as many enchantments as you have land, you're probably a control deck. Yeah, more than likely, hey? Yeah. It's so dirty. I'm a control. I'm a control snob. Speaking of control snobs, I was on our local EDH slash magic board on Facebook. Yep. And one of the guys who is a control snob likes to play mono blue, Jace, win with Temple Bell, Lab Maniac combo Ugh. all day long. It also turns out he has a Ismagus deck. Oh. Yeah. What a douche. I hate that guy. Yeah. He's got two decks. We did an Ismagus deck. What yeah. episode was that? That was, uh, I don't remember the number. That was the nothing but the internet dot deck. Oh, yeah, it was did. Ark of the Internet. Right. We searched up everything that matched edhrec.com and put it into the deck. Correct. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. Although the deck did end up being pretty cool like, to yeah, look. The deck was powerful. Yeah, the deck was amazing, but. It goes to show you when you play good cards, yeah, you're going to win games. <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, 35 artifacts. Any super unique and spicy ones, I think that there are. There's some good ones. There's some stinkers or loose includes, I think. But what? For the I, most part, I think you did pretty good. I don't put in stinkers or loose includes, Ryan. You know what? The only reason I say that, and I... L listen to this. <laughs> Go back to episode five of Commander Cookout Podcast and listen to Hopeless of Girapur. I'm pointing back to every old episode today. Yeah, throwing it back. Yeah. It's been edited a few times. It's on Tapped Out. Listeners can go check that out too. I've found that with small Voltron dot dude, you need the pump equipments. So it's fine to have things that make them unblockable or it's fine to have things that draw you cards attached to your equipment, but your equipment slots need to need to hold down the I'm going to win you the game slot. Yeah. I know that that's hard when we're trying to stick to a theme of, of really low converted mana cost. Yes. And Gaddock Teague makes us stick to... <laughs> yes. Like, we can't just play Argentum armor. Yeah, you, right? well, you kind of can't at all. So... I, I can concede that point, but I do think for sure some of them could change, and we're going to talk about those in the um, suggestions section. But yes. the good ones that are in there right now, I love me some Fire Shrieker. Yeah, baby, Fire Shrieker is an equipment for three, equips for two, equipped, equipped creature, easy for me to say, has double strike. Yes. I now, love double strike. I think pretty common include in Voltron dot deck. Yeah, while we're talking artifacts and equipment, Let's just get it out of the way. Five Swords, Jeet, Batter Skull, Infect Armor, they're all in here. If you're playing a Voltron deck, they're all in there. That's just how you do it. Yeah, Jeet is so good, and the swords are so utility. They're going to give you such an epic virtual card advantage in most cases and actual card advantage in, in every other case. Yes. Right? They're going to let you draw cards, untap, protection, buff. They're going to do it all. They do everything. The more swords you have on a guy the more times you can give people the finger. And the more times you give people the finger, the more likely you are to win. I love giving people the finger. That's a statistical fact also. 
Yes. Yeah. Like if you give somebody the finger during a game of magic and they've earned it and you're able to actually do it, you're not just being a jerk, it probably means you're winning. Other couple that I like after Swords and Jeet and Batter Skull, I like me some Behemoth Sledge. Behemoth Sledge. Oh. Behemoth Sledge is a colored artifact, which is kind of neat. It goes for uh, one green white artifact equipment. Equipped creature has plus two, plus two, lifelink, and trample, and equips for three. Yeah. Now, the only thing that is tricky about equipments is I think when, let, let's call it the all-in cost. The all-in cost is casting it plus equipping it. Correct. The all-in cost on Behemoth Sledge, six. That's lots. The swords are going to give you the same buff. They're going to give you two relevant abilities uh, and two relevant protections, and their all-in cost is four. Five. Sorry, five. five. Jeet's all-in cost, four. Oh. Right? That's the thing. Beam of Sledge might be, in, and the other ones that cost three and three are just tricky. They're tricky to play. I was looking for stuff to lower the equip costs. Not very many of them. Or things that like equip equipment for free. Not very many of those either. There are a couple, and we're going to talk about those for sure. And there is also a couple things that make artifact spells cost less. Ooh. And I'm looking at it right now. Masterwork of Ingenuity is actually any equipment currently on the battlefield, but for one mana. So it's yeah. it's essentially it's clone equipment. That's excellent. Right? That's I like Bloodforge Battle Axe as well, because that one's going to continuously give you a benefit. It's from new C17 product. It's a one drop Ooh. and two to equip. And all when, in cost of three. Yeah, all in cost of three. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage, right? Yep. To a player, put a copy of Bloodforge Battle Axe onto the battlefield. So you can just double up your battle axes every turn. Yeah. You put two battle axes on a Gaddic T, you're going to swing for six, get two more battle axes. Yep. Oh. And they give plus two plus oh, right? Not to be... Uh, yeah, not to be scoffed at, I guess. Yeah, I know. When, when, well, really, when something like Swords or uh, Behemoth Sledge is going to give you plus two in the front, uh, Blood Forge Battle Axe is going to give you plus two, plus two, plus four, plus, plus eight, eight, right? <laughs> awesome. Just keep investing. What else do we like? I was actually a big fan of something called Nico T. Nico T. I uh-huh. think it means Cat Claw or something. Sounds like it's from Terrigawa. Terrible Gawa. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, it's an equipment for three, equips for two, and it's whenever equipped creature, or whenever the equipped creature deals damage to another creature, it taps, and as long as Nico T remains on the battlefield, those creatures don't untap. Like, ever? As long as Nico T's on the battlefield. I like that. So it gives you control over your opponent's blockers if they have somebody that even blocks and kills your equipped creature. As long as the equipment still exists, that creature doesn't come back. Yeah. They're tapped, and they ain't coming back until somebody shatters that thing i like that that's a very good one so and so that's a good example of uh, let's call it a utility equipment one that doesn't actually provide pump now there's a couple of those that let you draw or give you just abilities i like um like there's um swift foot boots there's what's the other one lightning greaves and i don't actually play lightning greaves because you can't equip somebody when they have lightning greaves on Oh, them. that's right, because it gives you shroud. Yeah, and we don't play enough creatures to support Gaddock Teague having shroud. <laughs> yeah, and you don't play enough creatures to support moving lightning Equipment greaves back and forth. off of Gaddock Teague to equip them and then re-equipping them. Exactly. Okay, what's that other, what's the What's the cloak there? Whisper Silk Cloak? Uh, do you play that one? Probably. No, I don't, I don't think. Well, that's a good one. You know what, I don't like Whisper Silk Cloak because the all-in cost is so, so high. It's like two and three or four. Three and four or something? I think so. It's too much. It's not in here anyway. I do like it because it makes them unblockable. Whisper Silk Cloak with Grafted Exoskeleton. It also gives them Shroud. Oh, yeah, Shroud. God dang, Shroud. Yeah, it's a a thing. The the struggle is real when you're trying to get a 2-2 in for damage. But you don't want to protect them too much because you've got to be able to do stuff. sucks. Here, let's let's keep going. There's 14 enchantments. 14 enchantments. And the enchantments are going to do a lot of the same stuff. So you've got uh, Armadillo Cloak. You've got the new Armadillo Cloak. That's called? Unflinching Courage. Unflinching Courage. Uh, our man Jojo suggested that to me. Yeah, F-U, Joe. Yep, F-U in the A. Uh, Armadillo Cloak, Unflinching Courage, both one green, white. Enchant Creature gets plus two, plus two, Trample and Lifelink. It's basically Behemoth Sledge. But it doesn't stick around after the creature dies. It's half price behemoth sledge. <laughs> I like that. And then you've got uh, a couple of the uh, couple of the 
I like green, white, Creature Beater Enchantments, Gift of Immortality. Um, when enchanted creature is put into the graveyard, return it to the battlefield and return Gift of Immortality to it for three mana. That is awesome. Yep. Especially when you only have that really one guy. Yeah, and it, it lets you avoid the commander tax. Correct. Up in the uh, artifact section, we didn't talk about it, but I also play a Nim Death Mantle out there. It does the same thing. Whereas oh, it's yeah. A, when you a guy pay goes, four, I think. Yeah, but gets him out of the graveyard and equips the Nim Death Mantle to him. And the Nim Death Metal gives him plus two, plus two. Yes. Like he's that. Ba- he's back, he's bigger, he's black, he's a zombie, and he's a lot harder to kill. Nim Death Mantle, very good. Uh, I like Rancor. Rancor is green for Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, and Trample. And when Rancor hits the graveyard from the battlefield... Goes back to your hand. Like it. Excellent. And then a couple other the na- uh, normal life gain enchantments. Like, I'm not sure... I'm not sure... W- how many of those you need? Enchanted creature has life link, or enchanted mm-hmm. creature. We got spirit link. That one we could probably do without. We got a felidar umbra. That one's basically just there because it's got umbra it protects. It's got totem armor. That's yeah, right. So if a creature with totem armor would die, it doesn't die. Correct. And then you just get rid of the enchantment. It gives it an extra life, essentially, right? MVP of the enchantment section, I think. Shield of the Oversoul. It's for two and a. What do we call those hybrid mans again? Celestia. Celestia hybrid. Two in a Celestia, enchant creature, as long as target creature is green, it's indestructible, and gets plus one plus one. If it's white, it has flying, gets plus plus one, gets plus one plus one. So it gets plus two plus two and flying and life link. Indestructible. That's what I meant. Yes. Excellent. Three. That's super good. Also, what the hell is Drop a Honey doing in this goddamn deck? Well, if you equip Gaddic Teague enough, he's not going to be the wimpiest thing on the battlefield, and it's but a free destroy you, every but turn. But if you don't... <laughs> He's going to be the smallest. If you don't, then you suck at playing the deck. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. I also play Periphery Nodes just in case somebody destroys my drop of honey. Yeah, it's color shift to drop of honey. Get wrecked. The last enchantment I want to talk about is Light Mind Field. Give that one a read. Light Mind Field is an enchantment for four, so you have to play it after Gaddic Teague is dead or before you play him. Whenever one or more creatures attack, Light Mind Field deals damage to those creatures equal to the number of attacking creatures. So it shuts off like token swarm type decks. Precisely. They're going to kill your Gaddic Teague and then they're going to swarm you with goblins or they're going to swarm you with tokens or whatever, right? And then all their creatures are going to eat shit. Yes. And it's awesome. Same kind of deal. I also have a raking canopy. It's for one green green. Whenever a creature with flying attacks, raking canopy deals four damage to it. Oh, yeah, I like that. It's a good one. There's also another one called Briar Patch. Briar Patch is an enchantment. Whenever a creature attacks you, it gets minus one, minus zero until end of turn. Doesn't kill them, but helps you out. Doesn't kill them, but if that same token deck is swarming you, now they're going to do nothing to you. Now, like there's, that. there's a bunch of cards like that. I just thought of Briar Patch, and, and I knew Brando would like it because it's from Mercadian Masks. I love Mercadian Masks. <laughs> it's so terrible. <laughs> it kind of is. Okay, moving on. 35 lands, and they are your standard lands. Of course, we're playing Rogue's Passage because we're playing Utility. Yep, it's also a CCO staple. Yep. Get your Rogue's Passage, kids. We are playing some colorless get land or uh, get artifact back from your graveyard type lands. Some some of the common dual lands. We're playing Cathedral of War. And I, I think we've only ever featured that one time ever in a deck. It has, what's the, I forget the ability all the time. Exalted? Exalted yeah. So whenever a creature attacks by itself, it gets plus one, plus one from each thing that has exalted. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. And you know what? The only thing I say about um, commanders with zero colorless mana in their converted mana cost is be careful what lands you play when. Yes. Don't play a comes into play tapped land on turn two because then you can't cast Gaddic Teague. Don't play a colorless land on turn one because then you can't cast Gaddic okay. Teague on turn two. Mm-hmm. Play your tap. Your colored tap land on turn one, play your untapped colored land on turn two, right? Just common sequencing stuff that sometimes you don't figure or you don't think about when you see, oh, here's my mutal vault. I'm going to drop it turn one so I can attack with it on turn two. No, you want to play Gaddic Teague on turn two. Every time. Yeah. Every time. So just think about that. And you know what? Two color deck. If you don't have the budget for the $90 Savannah or the $70 Horizon Canopy or the X amount of dollars um, Gavany Township that's in there, because that card's actually expensive now. Is it really? It's six bucks. That's like 900 Canadian. I know. Huh. Anyways, it's not the most expensive land in there, but things like that can be substituted for the, I like, the comes into play common lands from Zendikar and Worldwake. The white one was enters the battlefield tapped, gives you a white, but when it enters the battlefield, target creature 
gets protection from the color of your choice. Right. Perfect for a Voltron deck. Very oh, what good. color are you playing? You playing mono blue? Give my dude protection from blue. Swing it for 20. Die. Yeah. The blue one, I think, was the best in limited because it gave your guy flying for a turn. Yes. Jumps your dude, take five or whatever. I love that one. We were talking about Gaverny Township. Six bucks. It's a land, comes into play, he taps for colorless. You can tap two colorless, white and green, and it put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. Great in token decks. Good in Voltron decks. Most likely, or, or I find in even my Captain Sissai deck that isn't very mana hungry, I have better things to do with my four mana because really, if I have four creatures out, I'm getting four extra power for four mana. Best served in token strategy like normal Celestia decks where you have 20 guys out and you pay four and you're getting 20 power. Very good. Yeah. yeah. So it has a diminishing return in this deck, but it's something to dump extra mana into if that's what you're doing. Yeah. It's unfortunately in Voltron decks, and we've talked about this before, which is why I play Infiltration Lens and a couple other kind of janky card draw equipment. You can kind of run your hand out, and in top deck mode, these things can be miserable. Yeah. And the last thing I want to say about top deck mode and lands is just be careful on how many comes into play tapped or clunky utility lands you have because you don't want to miss anything. You want to hit your one drop equipment. You want to hit your commander or more powerful equipment on two. You want to hit three or commander and equip on three and swing for the fences on four. Yes. That's the sequence that you want to have. Correct. Card draw spells. We got eight and that includes repeatable advantage cards not well not including repeatable advantage from re-equipping equipment <laughs> but uh there is a few cards that let you draw uh i'm thinking like mask of memory right hits a dude draw a card or wait when your dude does damage to a player you draw a card it's ophidian and then you discard a card yes i'm thinking of you just mentioned it uh what's it called something lens infiltration lens whenever your creature becomes blocked you draw two i like that yeah. just straight up draw two straight up draw two what's all in cost two one to cast, one to equip. Correct. That's awesome. That's a really good card. Okay, I like that one. Yeah. Targeted removal. Nine. Yeah. And I'm counting like sort of fire nice on there when you swing and hit, you deal two damage to something. Right. I'm counting jeet. Because you can remove counters from jeet to shrivel up their creatures and kill them off. Yeah, I'm counting swords, path, um, that swords to plowshare on a stick, spell shaper guy. Right. There's lots of ways to kill stuff. Yep. There's also a godsend. When it hits somebody, you can remove a permanent from the... Whenever it attacks, you remove a permanent from the game. Yeah. Or I attacks like or blocks. Blocks or becomes blocked. There we go. That's how godsend works. Jesus. And opponents can't cast the same spell that's been removed from the game, right? With godsend, yeah. So if you hit somebody's commander, they're not casting that sucker again. Correct. That actually goes... Excellent with Gaddock Teague, because if they're running a commander that costs three or less, now they can't play that either. <laughs> Since we're talking about that, just by the by, what about Phyrexian Revoker? Does the same thing. Name a name a card. They can't cast the card. What about Pithing Needle? Hey, yeah. Yeah, those those are Gaddock Teague staples, though, right? Yeah, they, they just are. shut more of the opponent's deck off. Yes. There's one other one that I want to talk about, but she's kind of expensive, so we'll save her for the budget section. Okay. There's there's all sorts of budget things that we're going to talk about with this deck, Ryan. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there is. Okay. <laughs> mass removal. Only two, and that includes Drop of Honey. I actually included it in the mass removal section because it's going to get something every turn, right? Correct. Well, and there's got, there's Drop of Honey, Perfery Nodes, oh, and that's Divine right. Reckoning. Yeah, Perfery Nodes. I forgot about that. So there's three mass removals. And, of course, Divine Reckoning is the wrath everybody except one. Like that. Okay, ramp spells. Ramp spells. Not including mana rocks. Right. Zero ramp spells. Well, Ryan, if you haven't noticed, that's because everything in the deck costs three or less. Uh, yep. Yeah. Except for a couple things. Except for a couple of things. Easily cuttable when we talk about the budget section, though. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three or less, the whole deck. Yeah, that's excellent. When you look at the average converted mana cost of the deck, 2.42. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And that could go down with like the cuts of what? Maybe five cards? I think there's five cards that cost more than... Something like that. That cost four or, or greater. And I think the highest end is six, and that's the Desert Twister that I just put in there for emergencies. The emergency Desert Twister. Yes. <laughs> and if you're in that kind of position, well, you know, you're probably going to lose anyway, but... Yeah. You get to Desert Twister something, and that's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. Okay. Mana Rocks. 
We got two. They're both equipments. You've got the Sword of the Animist. Correct. Whenever it hits, search for a land, put it into your hand, or put it on the battlefield. Whenever it attacks. You get a rampant growth every time equipped creature attacks. Yeah, you put it right onto the battlefield. Yeah, very good. So not a typical equipment in a green deck because you've got access to other ramp spells. But we didn't make no room for no ramp spells. No, so. equipment spells. Exactly. Yeah. Equipment spells, no ramp spells. The other one, I, I, you know what, technically you could say uh, Masterwork of Ingenuity could be a second Sword of the Animist, but that's yeah, probably, that's probably a loose play. But I also included Sword of Feast and Famine, because whenever you hit, let's say you have Sword of Feast and Famine and, uh, what was it, Infiltration Lens? Yes. On the same creature, hit, draw two cards, untap all your land, play the next two cards that you drew. The infiltration lens, they have to be blocked. Oh. Yeah. Dang, that's a non-bow. Yeah, less good. That's but. still a good play, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> either way, something sweet's going to happen to you. You're going to draw two cards, or you're going to get to replay your whole turn. Uh, I like both of those things. Yeah. Okay. Now, we were talking about it. Are there too many loose equipments or enchantments? Possibly. Possibly. Now, what if I told you, and keep in mind, there's already three tutors in this deck. Yes. There's... That's all? That's all. Huh. There could be many more. Yeah, I feel like I should have played more. Now, if we're, if we're going if we're going to jump into the the potential cuts, budget slash better options, what of Steel Shaper's Gift? Now, I'm just thinking because Stoneforge Mystic costs like 7 bucks and Stone Hero Giant is 6 or so bucks. Steel Shaper's Gift, 550, and this is a 2 mana sorcery that lets you search for an equipment, put it into your hand or play or Wherever it's two mana, sure. It's still five fifty though. What if you did Sigarda's Aid? That's a one drop search for an equipment. Ooh, buck seventy five. Still not <laughs> cheap enough. <laughs> what if you did open the armory? <laughs> yeah, thirty five cents, and they all fly under the three mana threshold that you've set for yourself. Oh, I love all that. of those cards. I like that. Yeah. So if you were looking for a cut for Stone Hero Giant because he costs nine hundred mana and doesn't win you the game. <laughs> <laughs> you could play Steel Shaper's Gift, Sigarda's Aid, Open the Armory, and that just is going to tutor an equipment right up for you. Which is pretty good. It doesn't put it right into play and then on to Equip it to a dude. Yeah, that's it's, right. That effect is so insane. It, it had to be included. And Gaddick Teague doesn't turn it off. Sigarda's Aid, you may cast aura and equipment spells until they had flash. Whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach it to target creature you control. And it's an enchantment for one white. Oh, crap. Yeah, I made a mistake. It's not a tutor, but it lets you do what Stone Hewer Giant lets you do. Sort of. That's it, why I, That's why I suggested it. It is kind of neat, and it gives them flash. Yeah, we could throw that in there for sure. I like that. Even with Stone Hewer Giant. Ooh. And you know why we would do that? F the budget, Ryan. I built this deck. F the budget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing dual lands, not gain lands, because I'm not a pleb. Okay. F the budget. Yeah. What about, there's a little ditty called Sanctum Prelate. Okay, Sanctum Prelate is a three mana, one white white. As Sanctum Prelate enters the battlefield, choose a number. Non-creature spells with converted mana cost equal to the chosen number can't be cast. That's Ooh. kind of like a mini Gaddock Teague. It's dirty. I know. 13 bucks. <laughs> but F the budget, says right? you. Yeah, why not? Now. The other thing that I was thinking, and this is what the original version of Hope of Girapur uh, worked like, and my mono-red Rorix Bladewing Voltron Stompy deck is one of my first decks, and I've been tweaking it and tweening it, <laughs> tweaking it and tuning it for like years now. It plays this list of cards that equip for free or equip for a considerably discounted price. Now, listen to these cards. You're thinking Hero's Blade, Bone Saw, those K kinds of things? Yeah, kind of. I'm thinking of Shuko, gives plus one, plus oh, equips for free. Okay. I'm thinking of Sai of the Shinobi, plus one, plus one, equips for free. Ronin War Club, plus two, plus oh, equips for free. Okay, <laughs> not enough. Storm Rider Rig, plus yeah. one, plus one, equips for free. Grafted War Gear, plus three, plus two, equips for free. <laughs> Those are all awesome. Not quite enough. How about cards that cost zero mana to cast, but equip for one, a la Bone Saw? Or how about one to cast, one to equip for plus two, plus two? All Ooh. in two. Okay. Bone Splitter, one of the original equipments. Pretty good. 
I like all of those. And the only reason I suggest them is because Gaddock Teague is so low to the ground. Mm, yeah. He costs two. What if you already had two or three equipment out when you cast them? And you equip him with all of them. And you're swinging for whatever. Seven. It would be seven. Seven, but which is a magic number on yeah. turn three. I guess we... Have we talked about that yet in this episode? Uh, the magic numbers of Voltron? Not not yet we haven't, but uh, I gonna... guess seven is three hits. Correct. Eleven is two hits. And 21 is one hit. Everything in between those numbers... Doesn't matter. Doesn't mean anything. So if you if you got your 11-11 Gaddock Teague, what's the point of creating a bigger target on his head by making him a 19-19 when it doesn't do anything more than just having 11? Exactly. Right? An 11-11 Gaddock Teague essentially does the same amount of work as a 1919 it Gattic takes Teague. the same amount of turns correct as not... a 19 or a 20 or a 12 there's no difference in in the in the turn clock of a voltron commander between 11 and 21 between 7 and 11 correct right and the you can make exception to that you could play the grafted exoskeleton on him and he needs to be 10 or 5 because right. infect. Exactly. Now, that same example that I was given, uh, grafted ex- exoskeleton costs four and then two. Right? Yeah. So you're all in is six. But what if on turn three or four, you have your Gaddock Teague loaded up and he's a 5-5 five, five or a 10-10 already or a 5-5 five, five or an 8-8 eight, eight already. Turn four, you hit him with grafted exoskeleton and boom, there's Victory the Victory is yours. Okay, now, hmm. If that all wasn't enough, <laughs> let's keep going. <laughs> now, you did have a little include that I like, and yeah. you had it in the Euro the Miststalker deck, too. Sword of the Chosen. That card is so terrible, terrible. but also... Yeah. G- check this out. Sword of the Chosen, artifact from Stronghold for two. Tap, target legend gets plus two, plus two to end of turn. Yeah, so it's got to be a legendary creature. Yep. It's fine. Gaddock Teague. Yeah, and it costs two. To give plus two, plus two. All in. Two. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like equipment before there was equipment. Yeah, it's like Bone Splitter. Maybe that's what Bone Splitter was based off of. Maybe two mana for two power is like the going rate. Also, that's a beautiful painting. That would be a sick-ass painting like above a pool table or something. Yeah, it's like a oil painting of this dude with a sword and he's totally going to own somebody yeah. off, off, off page, I I guess. would like to see that sucker like... I imagine in my head that that would be like just a full size, like it's like four feet by five feet. It's like it's huge. Yes, that would be sick. It's also, if that sword was on fire, to it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> damn or, it. Or you could just tear apart an old house and use the boards to make your own frame. Ooh, I have a buddy that does that. Yeah, that's a thing now, right? Yeah. And what do they call it? Shabby chic design. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's weird. probably what it was fucking companies called. Why the hell Shabby do we chic know that? picture frames. <laughs> Why do we know that? I'm building the house right now. Oh yeah. Okay. Anyways. Next couple freebies. Okay. You could play Hammer of Nizan. What's the Hammer of Nizan? Hammer of Nizan is equipment. Now, here's the thing. Costs four. Okay, I hate it. <laughs> four and four. But when you know what it does, whenever Hammer of Nizan or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach that equipment to target creature you control. Then equip creature deal or has plus two plus oh and has indestructible. That's pretty good apart from the eight. Yes. You could equip it for free if you played Nizan. Nizan Revered Bladesmith? Revered. Revered Bladesmith is a 5-4 cat artificer for four, one green, and one white. When he enters the battlefield, search your library for an equipment card and reveal it. If it is Hammer of Nizan, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card into your hand and shelf your library. So, you could... Um, pay six for a five four and get the hammer for free, or whatever artifact. Sure. Like name the artifact you need, or name the color you need protection from, and search it up via sort of whatever and whatever. That's not bad. I don't mind it. I, the hammer is a tough include in Gaddock Teague. I will admit that. Yes. I think Nizan is not a tough include in Selesnia Equipment Deck. I think you might be right, although Stone Hewer Giant does the same thing for one more, and you can do it over and over and over again. There is something to be said about that, particularly when you include white that doesn't have the greatest card advantage. Yeah. Um, 
Now, that being said, what of SRAM Senior Artificer? Whenever you he's a he's a two drop whenever you play an equipment or a vehicle or an enchantment, you draw a card. That's pretty cool. I like that. So he's good. He's like sixty nine cents. Ooh, budget. I like that. Yeah. Finger twiddle. Now, speaking of budget, I mentioned a couple that were like five or six. 13 bucks. We talked about cutting some of the duels, fetches, filters, because uh, it's only a two color deck. Yeah, you don't really need all that stuff, but if you got it, you might as well play it. Yeah, now another one of the little ditties, this is just an aside while we're talking about budget, that you included was Magus of the Tabernacle. Yes, now what does the Magus of the Tabernacle do, you might ask? Magus is a 2 6. He got six in the butt. <laughs> do not Google that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. For four. So he's breaking the everything costs three or less rule. Yep. He's white and three for a human wizard, and all creatures have, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the creature unless you pay one. Yeah. That is Magus of the Tabernacle. Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale is the card that it's referencing, and yeah. that card would actually be a f- f- hecking excellent include in this deck. It would be hecking great, it and could- it's on curve. Because it's a land. Right. What is it not on? Budget. Woo! <laughs> oh boy, is it not on budget? It costs eighty-seven million Canadian dollars, or uh, roughly thirteen hundred dollars American. Almost fourteen hundred. It would more than double the budget of this deck. Yes, the and whole deck, all in as it exists right now, a thousand dollars and twenty-four more dollars. A thousand and twenty-four dollars <laughs> <laughs> is what I meant to say. With what the hell costs that much again? Oh, drop a honey. Drop a honey is like four fifty. Yeah, drop a honey's half the the cost. And then your swords are a hundred bucks. Jeets twenty five, and then a couple of the other lands and are a hundred dollars. Yeah, like the savannah and the filter land and stuff. Blah blah blah. Yeah. W- what do you think? Um, two hundred fifty bucks if you cut drop a honey and played the. Let's say you played five of or six of the because five swords and jeet. Right. You played a basic land base. No drop a honey. You could probably get away what 250, 300 bucks, probably. Yeah, when you look at when you look at um, you know you got about 60, 65 cards that are between you know two bucks and three bucks. That's gonna run you two bucks and five bucks. That's gonna run you about two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, if you're playing good cards in general, if if you look at the breakdown of this deck, fifty four of the cards are less than two dollars, and that's not including the basic lands. Yeah, that that that's I think I think that's fine, right? Yeah, like that. This is a cheap deck to build, minus some of the more pimper includes. That if I you have look at uh, cards under five bucks, you're looking at fifty nine. It's just tapped out. It's kind of dumb. It goes from two bucks to five bucks, and then it goes five to twenty. Like, what about like the five to ten or? Yeah, I feel you like know what fi- I mean? <laughs> five to ten is where I buy cards. I don't know about you, but if a card's five or ten bucks, it's like. I'll buy that. But once it's to 15, 16, unless it's something super pimp or foil. That you, or that you need. Or if it's a commander you want to build. Yeah, or if it's like something super specific like that, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it in case I want to use it someday. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. I'll just buy it so I have one in case it ever goes up. Like um, the other day I bought, um, wh- what is it, Westvale Abbey? Yeah. The the dude that flips into the, the land that flips into the big, big demon. Yes. I bought four of them at like four bucks. Right, yeah. I'm not gonna buy four cards at like eleven bucks. No, just because I need, and I'm using three of those already. I have one extra still. Yeah, like you're already playing those. Like yeah, to just buy them. Cause, like I picked up a foil aggressive mining the other day for a quarter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just because someday I'll probably use that. But if it was seventeen dollars, it's like nope. You sit in that case, aggressive mining. Yep. You are not coming home with me today. I don't think that sentence will ever be said. No, because <laughs> why would an aggressive mining ever be in a showcase? <laughs> oh, yeah, that wasn't even the part that I was talking <laughs> <No>. about. <laughs> okay, strengths and weaknesses. Now that we've gone over some of the budget and or lack thereof. Yep. What do you want to start with, strengths or weaknesses? Let's start with the weaknesses because there's a couple that are glaring. Let's just get them out of the way. People hate Gaddock Teague. Yes. That's what you're talking about? Therefore, they hate you. Well, there's, there's a couple more. Okay. Suffers from typical Voltron setbacks. Meaning your well, artifact wrath. A well-timed Vandal Blast will wreck your whole weekend. Yep. You will just give up. Yep. You basically quit because you're screwed now. 
How about this one? This is a little ditty that the commander and guys were talking about just the other day. What if I was playing a card that gave your Gaddock Teague protection from green and white? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't cast any of your stuff on it. Oh, except for the equipment. The equipment, yeah. Well, I'll also Vanda blast you. You're, oh yeah, <laughs> you're done forever. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now you're now you you're can't finished. even target your Gaddock Teague with your own removal spell to kill him. <laughs> 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 so uh, that's what we're talking about. The typical Voltron setback. What else you got for weaknesses? Mostly just the typical commander setbacks. Yeah. Those are the glaring weaknesses. And Gaddock Teague is very small. He is small. Like, like when we were talking about Uriel the Fist Stalker, that's a dude by just by playing the deck. As soon as you enchant him. He's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, he's a 5-5 five, five naturally. Yeah. So as five, soon five as four, you give him anything. Oh, no, 5-5 five, five for 5. 5-5 five, five for 5. Yeah. He's a 5-5 five, five for 5, and as soon as he's enchanted, he gets plus 2, plus 2 for whatever enchantment it is. And so now he's up to, like, level 1, 3 turn clock, beat you down, Voltron Commander. Gaddock Teague is not that. Now. Gaddock Teague has to be pumped with things. He doesn't get pumped just by having things on him. The things have to pump him. Get pumped. <laughs> and you need a few of them to get him up to that turn three clock, turn two clock. You know what I mean? Where you're going to kill somebody in one or two or three swings, which is where you kind of want to be with a Voltron deck. Because swinging with a 4-4, four, four, yeah. they'll take it five times and then kill him. Yeah. That's a thing, right? I think that that's a thing. Let's, let's talk about that for a minute. You say swing for four with your Voltron commander. I think he... I, is that the right play to do, or is it very circumstantial? Very circumstantial. I've swung for four, like, a hundred times with um, Hope of Gear Pour, or no equipment, no pump on Rorik's Blade Wing. Take six, because you got haste, right? <laughs> and I think that's okay, right? He's six. He is six. Six is not four. It's six is also not seven. That's true. So it's still going to take me four turns to commander somebody out. Although the six could go into other damage, too. They're still taking regular damage. Yeah. And four well, and is you, a lot you more know like what? four. Six this time, eight next turn. Right? Yeah. That's still seven and seven, really. That's, yeah. Anyways, yeah. moving moving over to the strengths, I think the deck's fast. It is. And we, we've said that as a strength for the last two or three weeks now. I yeah. think because we're aggro players, we're trying to build fast decks. Yeah. But if you're like turn one... Equipment or enchantment or soul ring or whatever. Turn two, uh, I think you've got like something like 14 equipment or two drops. If you don't play Gaddock Teague, turn three, another equipment or Gaddock Teague and another equipment. Turn four, if the equipment that you had cast was uh, a grafted exoskeleton or a fire shrieker or a grappling hook that gives double strike too. Yep, that's for eight all included. Oh, that's all in eight. That's right. Yeah. Um, you could be above the seven threshold. Yes, you could by, by turn three or four. I think critical turn of the deck is four because four is when you're suited up your Gaddock Teague. He's ready to go two or three hits. Yes. And also, I just thought of this, Commander Voltron. Big weakness, things like Shatterstorm, Vandal Blast. Can you play Shatterstorm or Vandal Blast while Gaddock Teague is in play? I don't think you can. Uh, Vandal Blast, you can. Vandal Blast cost one. Yeah. But Shatterstorm, you couldn't because it cost four. Yeah. Ha! And Granulate, you can also not because <laughs> Granulate would F this deck too. Yes. Because everything costs less than three or less. But oh, you yeah. can't cast Granulate. Yeah. I love you Granulate. Because you got Gaddock Teague. Yep. Anyway. Um, I think if you tuned it a la the few equipments and dropped the converted mana cost down, added a little bit of card draw to replace your fast hands, um, you could fly under the radar really quick. Might only be suitable for the, the three or four player game, not the five or six player game because everybody hates Gaddock Teague, A, yeah. and B, you're going to run out of gas. And really, what is eight creatures in a deck when you have six opponents? Or what is, um, you know what... Uh, a 6-6 six, six Voltron when he's your only guy, right? Yeah. This is like a, we were talking about it at the top of the show, playing against Karavek. He yeah. rolled us because there was just three of us. There just wasn't enough hate in there, and this guy can beat wholesale ass in a game. Oh, where yeah. We haven't beat wholesale ass for a while. Yeah. Yeah. We are. How about this? CCO Nation, let us know what you think about the little Voltron guy. Yeah. Hopeless of gear to pour. We got... Gaddock Teague. And we here. had great success on Hopeless Gear Poor. I think it's actually even won a couple games. Yes, it has. <laughs> it's, it's won. It, it's good. It demands attention. The, the little, fast Voltron guy 
demands attention because if you leave it unchecked, that's that goes back to the critical turn thing. Yep. The critical turn is the turn that if you're unchecked, you will win. You will okay? secure a victory. So, so by turn three or four with Gaddock Teague, he's suited up, he's ready to go. If nobody does anything, sure, it's a three-turn clock, but you've got removal, you've got tricks, you've got surprises in your hand that say, oh, just kidding, on, let's say, turn five, it's not an extra turn now. You're going to die this turn if you yeah. can't deal with it right now. Yeah. Oh, you've made a bunch of blockers and they're all green. Here's my sword of protection from green. Get wrecked. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think that that's a definite strength. And if you wanted to tune the deck a little bit, you could take advantage of that under the radar quick Voltron even more on the cheap because those equip for free artifacts and those couple cheapy search for artifact cards are actually very inexpensive. Yes. So if you're down with that, for sure. What's next? Card of the week? Card, Card of, the, of week. the week. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you got to say it right. You got to say it correct. What is our card of the week this week, Ryan? We had it. Surprisingly enough, it's something from Terrible Gamma again. Oh, no. Right? It's a little ditty called Kusari Gamma. It's an equipment for three, equips for three. It gives shitty fire breathing, which means two colorless plus one plus oh. It's shitty fire breathing. But, get this. Whenever a creep, equipped creature deals damage to a blocking creature, Kusami Gami, whatever it is, deals that much damage to every other creature that that player controls. Excellent. So it wipes out their whole team if they block them. Or if they don't block them, just dump all your extra mana because it's turn eight yeah. into it and give them plus four, plus four. Yeah. That never hurts. And win it up. It's very good. And nobody sees that coming. And it's from Terrible Gamma. We keep finding terrible gamma cards yeah, that are good. Like a rat on it or something. What are we doing? It's probably here? in the rat good deck that had Jeet in it. That's like a hundred dollars now. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So we like that guy, and it costs a grand total of a buck twenty nine. It's like six bucks Canadian. Yeah. It's not too bad. We're just talking about how that's where cards that you want live. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It's a very good card. I dig it lots. Should we move on to your favorite part of the show? Oh, yes. Milk list. The milk list. Okay. So, milk list. As per edhrec.com, these are the most popular cards in Celestia Colors from zero mana all the way up to 15 mana. Ooh. Ooh. And I like I like the two-color pairs because there's some weird, stupid it, cards. Yeah, why are yeah. they there at yeah. all? Okay. At the zero drop slot, Mana Crypt. Nope. Sol Ring at one. Yep. Celestia Signet at two. No. Aura Shards at three. Nope. Parallel Lives at four. Nope. No, not a token deck. Definitely not. Mirari's Wake at five. Nope. Sun Titan at six. Nope. Probably be a good include because your equipments are going to die. And Sun Titan could get Teague back. Ooh. But he costs six. He yeah, does cut. Well, we could replace the Desert Twister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Sun Titan still beats Wholesale Ass with a couple he's, of swords on him. He's got Vidge, and if you put Behemoth Sledge on him, oh. he's got Vidge and Trample and Lifelink. He's got L Lamplinkle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what he's got. Okay, at seven, Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you got me, you got me. No. Okay, at seven, Avengers and a car. At eight, Avacyn Angel of Hope. Nope. Nine, Iona Shield of Ameria. Nope. 10, Storm Herd. What the hell? <laughs> no. 11, World Spine Worm. Nope. Stupid green. World Spine Worm is a 15-15 and it costs 11? Nice. What the hell? And it gives you five power of dudes or whatever when it dies. Like 15 more power yeah, yeah, worth yeah, yeah. of dudes when it dies. Yeah, awesome. I like that guy. Blightsteel at 12. Nope. Emrakul the Promised End at 13. Nope. There's no 14. Does no Celestia deck contain a 14 drop? What the hell? Write it down. We're doing it in a deck. We'll Get it on it, CCO Nation. Yep. You find us a card to build around it. A Talkthon Worm at 15. I hate that guy. I know. I hate him. And you, no. You don't include it. Hell no. Doesn't fit the uh, Doesn't, everything under three. Apparently not. No. Um, <laughs> one Milkless match. Nice. That's good. That's two weeks in a row now we did one Milkless match. Up top. That was an actual high five. Yep. I hope you could hear that. Yep. Okay. Spicy calculator? Let's do it. Okay. Okay. So, at the time of this recording, 322 Gaddock Teague lists in all of edhrec.com. And we did a thing that we haven't done for a while. We've gone, like, 
pretty far down. He's the ninth most popular Celestia commander. Yeah, and you know what? We don't we don't just try and pick the top ones, or we don't try and pick the bottom ones. We pick what we're going to pick. It just so happens that he's been a little bit lower down than uh, a few of the previous builds that we've done. Do you think because he's a feel bad card? I think it's because he's a feel bad card. I think it's because he doesn't make a very good commander. You don't think he makes a good commander? Um, he does what Grand Arbiter Augustine does, ooh, but kind of yeah. better. He does what Grand Arbiter does. I think he is a better fit in the 99 in a Captain Sisse deck. And For sure. she's number one, two, three, four, five. Yep. I think if you're going to do uh, Celestia, maybe you're better suited to do tokens than try and do control because Very while true. white and green can play control colors, they usually need a little bit more support from blue or black. Yeah. That could be a thing. Uh, in which case, he would just go into the 99 of one of those decks, too. Indeed. He's a great card in the 99. Maybe he's not as powerful as the commander. And he's such a piece of shit. Oh, I think that's it. I think that is it. <sighs> Anyways. He's kind of like Norrin, where Norrin always pops out on turn one. He, he's just there now. Yeah. Gaddick Teague always pops out on turn two, and he always does that same goddamn thing. Or even if you've, if you've gone land Sol Ring and you're after the Gaddick Teague player, you didn't ramp up to four. For turn two, you are at two on turn two. Yeah. Yeah, because Teague is, yeah. Yeah. You know what? It goes back to the, does the same thing. We we talk about unique gameplay experience. I don't think that you get that not with our Voltron deck and not with the stock Teague list. No. Just like um, Soul Ring or Mana Crypt or Mana Vault on turn one in Grand Arbiter, turn two, most powerful play, Grand Arbiter. Yep. Every damn time. Yep, that's what you want to do. That's what you're going for. Yeah. So he's the ninth. I think that was worthy of note because mm. he's a little bit farther down there. 322 lists. Average converted mana cost, we talked about that, 2.42. Very low. Yeah, very low. I think that's the lowest list that we have, lower than uh, my Karlov deck, which is like 2.48. Yes. Yes, you did it. Okay, critical turn. Talked about that. Turn four. Very good. Turn four, unchecked. You're going to beat somebody to death. I love beating people to death. <laughs> yeah, optimal game size. I said four. It yeah, could yeah. be. Th- it could be three. It, sh- it probably is three. Four is pushing it. I think three, four. Yeah. It, it's it's going to well, affect the spiciness a yeah, little bit, yeah. but with some tweaks, you could definitely get to four. The way okay. it is now, I would say three. Okay, uniqueness rating. This is different cards in our list than the stock list on EDHrec.com. There are fifty-two unique cards in our list. Yes. Yes. That's a good that's a good uniqueness rating. That's maybe, a good one. Maybe Gaddick T isn't a Voltron commander. Maybe. I don't think he is. Maybe he isn't. I think he's a dick control general and him and Grand Arbiter go to the bar after work on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. <laughs> Screw both those guys. They look yeah. like they're about the same age too. Yeah, old, old They're bastards. old crouch crotchety dudes at your work that are like they don't they don't work any harder than they have to because the younger dudes have always been better at their jobs than these guys have been. <laughs> but They've become proficient at what they do so much as they can do it really good and we can't actually replace them. <laughs> Those bastards. Sons of bitches. Sons of bitches. Anyways, three tutors in the deck. That really hurts the spiciness rating because it, mm. it, it was very high and then the three tutors dragged it down. Yeah. And overall, when you when you put those tutors in, I think that they're very well suited because Stoneford Mystic, come on, she's the best at what she does. Correct. Stone Hewer Giant, Commander Staple, goes in. Absolutely. 100% of the time. What's the third tutor? Um, enlightened tutor? Enlightened tutor. Yeah, enlightened tutor. You had to think about that and lean away from the mic, but you got there. 45 spicy. That's okay. Not terrible. Yeah. Take out the, the tutors, which you shouldn't, by the by. Well, let's let's just do if if we did. 67. Nice. And that's with one tutor because this, this, the formula lets you have one tutor. The one is Stone Hero Giant. You think? Absolutely. It costs like eight. It's repeatable. It costs seven. It's repeatable and it equips. And it gets under Gaddick Teague's oppression. You can get something that you could get your grafted war gear. Grafted the, exoskeleton. Grafted exoskeleton with yeah, the stone okay. hero giant okay, and yeah, equip yeah. it. If, if you were to play, yeah, Nazan's hammer, same thing. Yep. Yeah. You just um, get it. You still got to pay the man up front, though. Yeah. But after that, yeah. After every, that, it every costs turn you. if he's unchecked, right? Yeah, Maybe every, he's your one guy with your Divine Reckoning that you pick, and you just bin Gaddock Teague every time you cast Divine Reckoning. <laughs> you just cast him again for four, cast him again for six, because he yeah. still costs less than Stone Hero Giant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, the uh, the spicy went down uh, 20, 
two points because of those three tutors. And again, the three tutors, they just eliminate or reduce the chances for a unique gameplay experience because probably, like how many times out of 10 are you searching for a sword to give protection? Every time. Great strategy. Or if you just want to beat wholesale ass, how many times are you going to search for batter skull? Every time. How many times has a Stoneforge mystic searched for a batter skull? I'm pretty sure that's why they printed one of the two. Yeah. Because they really liked the other one and just wanted to make it way better. Yeah. I'm talking about across all of magic. Yes. How many Stoneforges have found batter skulls? I would say all of them. Oh! If you ever met a Stoneforge that didn't find a batter skull, the person that owns that Stoneforge is an idiot. An F you. That person is Joel. The first time we played his cube, when I had a Stoneforge Mystic in my pack, picked it. Next pack, didn't pick the uh, the batter skull, and then passed it to the guy to my left. And the guy was like, "You're so stupid! I just seen what you picked." And I was like, "Wait a second! You saw my Stoneforge Mystic? F you! <laughs> and then you didn't take the batter skull? You're an idiot!" And then I showed him. It was a sort of fire nice. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I don't know what the right pick there was, but I round. I won. The, I won. I won. So there you F, go. F that guy and F the guy I played. <laughs> <laughs> and F Joel. Oh, that was so good last week. Yeah. No. F you, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Anything else we need to say? Brando's final thoughts of the day on the deck. Brando's final thoughts of the day on the deck. It's not my favorite list that I've built as far as Voltron commanders go, but I think it's lots of fun, and it's a unique thing, which is why I tried to keep it below three, because it is essentially the same deck as Ural, but it's not as efficient as Ural. If you want to play a sweet Voltron list that you're going to win lots of games with, play Ural. You want to sneak out a few games in a small group, our boy Gaddick Teague will get you there. And speaking of that, get you there, we're going to get you there with an extra special bonus episode later on this week. It's going to outline some really exciting stuff. And then shortly after that, we're going to be back with a new arc on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song! Woo!